Hello, welcome to Steve McDonald's Crafting. Well, today I'm going to be doing this frame. Now, I got this frame for, I think, 50 pence at a car boot sale, which is like a yard sale. And it is a bit tatty, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to do it up and I'm going to put this mirror inside it. But before I do that, I'm going to put an engraving on the front of the mirror. Now, this is still a piece of the mirror, a big mirror that I broke. I am getting down it now. I've nearly finished using it all up. My son and his girlfriend are thinking of buying a house soon. So I thought this would make a great gift for them. They love skulls and they love steampunk. What I've done is I've drawn a steampunk type of skull. And this is the skull that I've drawn. I've drawn it using Procreate. And now what I'm going to do is transfer this image into my laser box basic program and engrave this using the Xtools D1. I've cut my mirror now so it fits into this frame. There is a bit of movement but that's not a problem because I will have a backing board on this as well. Next stage is to go over this mirror with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and then put the cover on this so that the laser will engrave. Oh look it's me. Hello. I need to cover the mirror in something black to ensure that you can engrave on it because if not it, it won't engrave on glass and Xtools do provide these brilliant black transfers that you can put on and all you have to do is soak them in some water and then you can put that on. And once you've soaked this in water, then it comes off. Now, you can cut this down to size as well. You don't need to use this one big bit. But, obviously, I want to use this one big bit. Oh, look, I've cut a bit, uh, broken a bit off it. Because of the size of the engraving that I'm planning to do. You do need to get all the bubbles out, though. That is really important. Because if there's any bubbles or any water in there underneath this, then it won't engrave in those parts. Now, try and use a better scraper than the one I'm using, because everything, wherever it's not touching the glass, it will not engrave. This is actually a lot more robust than it looks, this stuff. And try and avoid getting any crinkles in it as well. You can move those out if you get some, look, like I have just there. And I will put that bit in in a second. So then I, what I do is I go over and remove as much of that water as I possibly can off the top. And then I go over and dry the whole thing with a hairdryer. So as you can see, I've got the mirror all sorted out now. It's nice and dry. I do need to frame this to ensure that I'm getting a good result. That hum you can hear in the background is just the calling fan of the X-Tools. It's actually very, very quiet. Now, regarding the image, this is the image here. So this is quite a large piece, so it's going to take 170 minutes, which is not a problem. I have no problem with that. I'm going to be in here all day. I've got it set to flat because I'm not using the rotary system. And now I can just frame this to make sure that it's all in the right place. And you use the actual cross laser that is here rather than looking at the point of the laser itself. Yeah, and that looks absolutely fine to me. Make sure that you put on your goggles because you, you this is going to reflect laser around the room as well because you're doing it on glass and this is a mirror. And then all I need to do is push start. And it's telling me that the remaining time is about 160. 70 minutes. While the laser's doing its thing and engraving that mirror, I'm going to get on with the frame. So first of all, I need to remove all these pieces, like the screws, and then I'm going to get rid of this tape off here. I'm ready now to strip this off, and I'm using a paint and varnish stripper. It's non-flammable, non-drip, but I have a sneaky suspicion that this frame might be plastic. I've got a piece of brown paper here, got my gloves on because I want to make sure that I don't get it on my skin and I'm also going to pull my sleeves down as that extra bit of added protection. I'm going to pour a bit of this into here and then liberally paint this on and hopefully that should lift all that paint off there. I have got the extractor fan going in my studio as you can hear so that is giving it a nice flow of air right the way through and if this needs a second coat 
then obviously I can give it a second coat. What I'll do now is I'll leave that probably for about half an hour, check it, see if it's bubbling up, and then I'll show you how I'm gonna strip it. Well, this has really started to crinkle up now, and as you can see, it's just literally moving off there. I think it's ready to come off. And what I'm going to use to take this off with is some wire wool, a 0000 wire wool, which is the smoothest wire wool that you can get. And again, I've got my gloves on. And this just allows you to get into all those little areas without having to use a knife which may scratch it or damage the frame or plastic. I, I really like wire wool for this sort of thing. And it has taken off most of the gold that seems to be underneath it as well. And then to neutralise this, all you need to do is spray it with water and wipe it down with water and then it will neutralise it. So as you can see, it really has cleaned that up lovely and the more I have a little go at it the better it cleans it off. The frame's all clean now and I'm quite pleased with how well it's come out and I'm going to spray it with this metallic silver but I do have a few concerns that spraying it onto plastic it isn't going to give it a good grip although obviously it's been sprayed on there before so what I'm going to do is go over this with a very fine sandpaper. And this is an 800 grit sandpaper. And that should just give it a little bit of a rougher surface without causing any marks in the actual plastic itself. I've never dealt with a plastic frame before. I can't understand why they would have made a flat frame out of plastic. Firstly, environmentally, it's not great. So I'm glad I'm upcycling this. But secondly, I would have thought it was more expensive to make it out of plastic than it is out of wood. And wood is sustainable. They've obviously got their reasons. And then I'm going to clean that up using some alcohol. Because not only will the alcohol get rid of the dust, but it'll also get rid of any residue of anything that is on there as well that may contaminate it when I come to spray it. Yeah, look. How much came off for that? I have hung it inside that box and what I've done is I've attached the string to my overhead camera support. I don't know if this is going to work. We can only try. And what I'm going to do is just prop behind it there, keep it away from the edge, a couple of things that are going to hold it up. Before I spray it, I will put on my mask, even though I've got extractor fans on and things in here, I don't want any of this spray going into my lungs. And I'll also give this a really good shake up as well, and then I'll show you how I'm going to spray it. Okay, I've given this a really good shake up now. Um, so all I need to do is from about here, Let's just give it a good first coat. And then what I'll do is I'll leave that to dry and then about 20 minutes time, I will give it another coat. The mirror's all finished now. I'm really pleased with how it's come out. I know it's quite difficult to see because obviously it's a mirror and it reflects. But I put my son and his girlfriend's name on it as well, Jordan and Vicky, and that engraved lovely. I did two different types of engraving on it. Oh, that's better. I think that you can see it a bit more. So this was a lot harder and deeper engraving, and this was a softer engraving. And that is the flexibility of the X-Tools D1 laser. But if you didn't have that, you could probably do this with Armour Etch or something very similar. And the frame, I think, has come out really well. Very pleased with the frame. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm really pleased with it. And I just think it makes a nice gift for them. It's nice to give them a little gift every now and again for no reason whatsoever. Please boot the like button if you've enjoyed this project. It really does help me to get my videos out there because I'm really trying to grow this channel at the moment. If you'd like to buy me a coffee or if you'd like to get hold of anything that I've used today, then the links for everything, including the laser, are in the description below. Take care. Enjoy your crafting. Bye.